In this video, we're going to look at the difference between a strong and a weak acid or base. Let's first remember our definition of an acid and a base. A, an acid is going to be a proton donator. So something that is a strong acid is going to be good at donating a proton. Something that is a weak acid would be bad at donating a proton. What about a base? A strong base would be great at accepting a proton. A weak base is going to be, it, it's not really going to want to accept that proton. So what are some examples of this? Well, bases are going to be really easy to look at because a strong base, a strong base is going to be this OH anion. And if you throw a proton at that, if you give that an H+, plus, well, it's going to be quick to pick it up and it's going to make water, right? But what about a weak base? Let's think of the chloride anion, Cl-. minus. If I put this into a solution, well, Cl- minus is totally fine carrying that negative charge. It's pretty electronegative. It's got a pretty big electron cloud, so it's totally fine with holding on to that negative charge. And even if you throw a proton at it, it's not really going to pick it up. And so the Cl minus, we could say, even, even if it gets that proton thrown at it, it's still just going to stay by itself. It's totally fine hanging out all alone. So we would call this chloride anion a weak base. It's bad at accepting a proton. Well, there's going to be weak acids as well, right? If we have hydrochloric acid, well, when that goes into water, that is going to be very quick to give up a proton, right? And it's not going to want to go back. It's not going to want to go back to the left. And that makes sense because this chloride, this is the same weak base. It's not good at picking up a proton where this H3O plus is pretty fine holding onto it. So this chloride would be a weak base but the hydrochloric acid would be a strong acid. What would a weak acid look like? Well, a really good example of this is hydrofluoric acid. Fluorine is very electronegative and it's very tiny. And so when it mixes with water, yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll sometimes give up that proton. Yeah, sometimes. But that F- is also really hungry for a proton. F- is actually a pretty good base. And so every time it runs into this H3O+, it might be like, ah, actually, you know what, I gave you that proton before, but I'm, I'm actually going to need to take that back. And so HF, this would be a weak acid because, well, yeah, some, some of it dissociates, but some of it goes back to being, goes back to being hydrofluoric acid. So we need a way to look at these weak acids and bases. So what we want to recognize here is that the conjugate base of a strong acid is a very weak base. In other words, a strong acid like hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid or nitric acid, those are going to have their conjugate base being just a really bad base. It's bad at being a base. Like, you know what, I'm just fine hanging out in the solution. I don't need any friends. I don't need anyone to give me any protons. I can just sit here. So it's a weak base. But the conjugate base of a weak acid, the conjugate base of a weak acid is actually going to be a pretty decent base. We're not going to say it's a strong base because that would imply that we're mostly just going to shift back to the left. But we can have all kinds of ratios shifting from the left to the left, to the right, in these types of reactions. We call these equilibriums because, so that really means is that some of this hydrofluoric acid is going to be breaking up to make fluoride, but some of that fluoride is going to be grabbing a hydrogen again and turning back into hydrofluoric acid. And those are going to be happening at an equal pace. So that's why we call it an equilibrium. So when we have that kind of situation, we have what's called a dissociation constant. What is that going to be? Well, we already saw one. We saw Kw. Remember, Kw was that disassociation constant for water when it breaks up into H3O plus and the hydroxide anion. Well, when we have K, we call that an equilibrium constant. And when we deal with acids and bases, we're going to call it Ka or Kb. And that's going to be the dissociation constant for an acid dissociation constant for a base. But what's happening here? Well, what we're trying to do with K is create a ratio of how much of our acid broke up 
into the products and how much stayed as the reactants. So what we're doing is making a ratio. And so the way we do this is we take the concentration of our products, we take the concentration of our products divided by the concentration of our reactants. Notice we don't put the H2O in here. We don't have that in this equation. The reason for that is that H2O is a liquid. It doesn't have a concentration, so it doesn't get included in this ratio. It's really basically just there or it's not. So when we do that, we get a very specific number for this. So our Ka will be a specific number, and that will always be true for this particular substance. So Ka, it's experimentally determined, and it's always the same for a particular acid. And the same goes with KB, but we're really going to be using KA more often than not, right? The PR campaign for pH really took off, and we really look at things in terms of acids more than we look at them in terms of bases. So with this in mind, when we were looking at determining the pH of a strong acid, so pH of a strong acid, the identity did not matter. But for the pH of a weak acid, the pH of a weak acid will depend on Ka and the initial concentration of that acid. So notice, I wrote HA here. This A stands for acid. So we start to just use this abbreviation when we start to make generalized equations. So if Ka and HA are the two factors that are going to play a part in the pH of a weak acid, how do we actually use that? How do we actually figure out the pH of a weak acid? Well, first off, let's remember, when we're calculating pH, we're going to take the negative log of the concentration of that H3O+. Plus. Okay? That is going to be our equation for determining pH. Well, we need to be able to do something with this Ka and this HA to replace this H3O+, because that's a mystery. We don't know how much H3O+, there is in a weak acid. So, we're going to come back to the definition of Ka. It's always going to be the concentration of that H3O+, times the concentration of whatever conjugate base we have. And it's going to be divided by the initial concentration of our acid. So this is just a math equation. We could replace this with an x, and this with a y, and this with a z, and then it would just be a simple math equation. So the first way we can figure this out, the first shortcut we can take here is we can remember that when we have this dissociation reaction, this hydrolysis, well, what we're really having is that this H3O plus and this A minus, this anion, the conjugate base, they are going to both have the same amount. So they separate in equal proportions. So it'll be the same exact number. Okay? Well, if that's the same exact number, then we can really replace all of this with H3O plus squared. We can square that, and it's going to be the same as taking these two together, right? So that's a fantastic revelation because it means that we can get rid of one of these unknown terms. So now, let's put this back together. Let's, let's make this start to make sense. We've got Ka is now going to equal the H3O plus squared divided by HA, or the concentration of HA. And so now I can multiply both sides by that concentration of HA, just, we're just doing a little algebra here. And then I want to get rid of this square right here, so I'm going to square root both sides. And I end up with... And I end up with the H3O plus concentration could just be replaced by this expression. And so if we take this guy and we bring it back up into this expression, 
I can use that to solve for my pH. So to write this out, the final version, I'm going to take the negative log, and I need to put this whole thing in parentheses. You need to be really careful about this when you're plugging this into a calculator. It's really common for people to accidentally take the square root of just the HA and then multiply that by the KA, and then they get the wrong answer. But I can take this whole expression, I can take this whole thing, and that will give me the pH. So it's a little more complicated to find the pH of a weak acid and a weak base, but it is very possible, because the Ka will be able to look this up in tables. And the concentration of the HA will be a given value. So we'll be able to solve this problem. And in the next video, we're going to do some practice with that. But then the one last thing we want to talk about is when we do have some kind of weak acid, let's say we've got HF. And I try to neutralize that with some kind of base, right? Well, when I do that, the OH and the H get together and make water, right? Perfect. Totally fine. But then I'm still going to have this Na plus hanging around in solution, which isn't really going to do anything, but I'm also going to have this F minus hanging around. And we've already established this F minus, that's a weak base. And so this F minus will actually, will actually react with some of that H2O, forming this new back and forth of HF and OH minus. So if I were to fully neutralize a weak acid, my pH actually ends greater than 7. So neutralizing a weak acid, your pH goes higher than 7. And this can make things a little more complicated in more advanced chemistries.